This book is amazing. I'm not exactly sure when you'll be watching this video, when I'll be able to get it up on YouTube, but I am shooting this video on the Feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe because today I'm going to consecrate myself to Jesus through Mary. And I prepared for this Marian consecration with Gately's book, 33 Days to Morning Glory. It is so good. If you are Catholic, I highly recommend this book. I'm going to reread it annually uh, each November and re-consecrate myself on Our Lady of Guadalupe's feast day. And I'll use this book for a few years before I switch to another Marian consecration book. So I just want to share that I know God has slowly and gradually led me to his mother because I grew up around a lot of Protestants. So I was fearful of offending God by knowing his mother. And I was just very focused on my relationship with Jesus. And I'm so glad that God has led me to his mother just as if you wanted to become closer to a friend, on earth, you would probably want to get to know their family, their mother. That's a beautiful way to understand your friend even more deeply. And Jesus, the most important relationship in our lives, gives us his mother. And it's beautiful for us to know and love his mother. Jesus loves his mother. And we know that Mary perfectly loves Jesus. In high school with my Catholic young adult ministry, we actually visited uh, migrant workers from Guatemala and we picked produce with them. We brought them supplies, food, had lunch with them, fellowship, played games, and we gave them Our Lady of Guadalupe cards. And in high school, I thought that was a little strange. I thought, why aren't we giving them Jesus cards? They had a strong devotion to Our Lady of Guadalupe. And that was a way for us to love them as friends, was to give them Our Lady of Guadalupe cards. And I didn't really understand it then. And it's so beautiful that I understand Mary now. The story of Our Lady of Guadalupe is amazing. I have a video linked below. It is so miraculous. She appeared in Mexico, but many Hispanics have a great devotion to her and many North Americans. So I'm really excited to consecrate myself today on Our Lady of Guadalupe's feast day. And I actually bought my first Marian icon ever, Our Lady of Guadalupe. I've always loved art, Marian art in churches, but I'm not a big shopper, so I just never thought to buy Marian art. But I love that I have this so I can always remember today, and I can always remember that Mary is there for me, my spiritual mother, always leading me to Christ. So I want to tell you a little bit about this book. There is so much good information in this book. I can't possibly uh, summarize it all, but I'll give you a little bit and I'm going to divide it into two parts. So make sure to subscribe so you can see my part two summary of this book. So there's a beautiful introduction and the introduction reminds us that Mary did nothing to receive God's grace. God's grace is a gift. She was born without sin because she was created by God that way. So Mary is this beautiful creature that God created. The introduction tells us that God gives us a powerful and effective way to become great saints. And God gives this to us not because of our goodness, not because of anything we've done, but because of the perilous times that we live in. And we know from the Gospel of Matthew that Jesus asked us to work, to preach. In 1 Corinthians, St. Paul reminds us that there are a variety of workers. And Mary's work is important. Her task to conceive, bear, and nurture Jesus to be his mother is so important, obviously, as well as to feed and nurture Christians with grace to be our spiritual mother. She spiritually gives birth to Christians and helps them to grow in Christ. 
To nurture Christians with grace and help them to grow in Christ is ultimately the Holy Spirit's job, but the Holy Spirit is the spouse of Mary. Because of the Holy Spirit, we had the incarnation where God became man in Mary's womb. We know from Luke that Mary gave the Holy Spirit permission to conceive in her womb. So the Holy Spirit acts and works through Mary. I have to share a little bit from the book. It's Mary's great God-given task in union with and by the power of the Holy Spirit to form every human being into another Christ, that is, to unite everyone to the body of Christ and form each person into a fully mature member of his body. Every human being is invited to rest in the womb of Mary and be transformed there by the power of the Holy Spirit, more perfectly into Christ's own image. So if we want to become more Christ-like, we need to belong more fully to Mary as Christ does. So then this book moves into the first of the four saints that Father Gately covers, Saint Louis de Montfort. Also at the end of the book, Father Gately summarizes each saint's teachings into three words. For Saint Louis, the three words are passion, baptism, and gift. For passion, Father Gately tells the story of Saint Louis and the family that he comes from and the culture that he was raised in. And basically St. Louis had a fiery temper as his father did. And instead of using his fiery temper for evil, which we see often in today's world, he consecrated himself to Mary. And that fiery temper developed into fire for God, a zealous spirit. So those of us who were born without that fiery temper, we ask, how can we be more like St. Louis? We can ask the Holy Spirit to set us on fire for God. And since the Holy Spirit is Mary's spouse, we can unite ourselves to Mary and allow both Mary and the Holy Spirit to set our hearts on fire for God. The next summary word that Father Gately uses for St. Louis is baptism. At baptism, we're transformed into members of the body of Christ by the Holy Spirit. And after baptism, we still need to grow in Christ. And we know the Holy Spirit used Mary to form Jesus Christ in her womb. So we know Mary nurtures this growth with the Holy Spirit in the body of Christ, in its members. The last word that Father Gately uses for St. Louis is gift. When we give ourselves to Mary, she gives herself to us in many ways. Uh, one way in particular is that she protects us from evil. We know that Mary is the queen of heaven because she is the mother of Jesus and Jesus is the king of heaven. In the Davidic kingdom, the queen was the mother of the king, not the wife. So since Mary is the queen of heaven, she is above all angels, Satan, and humans, but of course below God. So since Mary is queen of heaven, we know that Satan fears Mary. We know Satan is prideful and suffers from being beaten by the humble servant, Mary. Mary's a human, a humble handmaid of the Lord. I love the story of St. Bernadette at Lourdes when she heard evil demons and Mary just gazed at them and they disappeared. So when we unite ourselves to Mary, the Holy Spirit, God the Father, and Jesus Christ, evil does not have power over us. And that is such a beautiful, comforting thing to know in this crazy, perilous world that we live in. So St. Louis reminds us that by imitating Jesus and giving ourselves fully to Mary, we imitate Christ and become more Christ-like. And Mary molds us to be more Christ-like and brings us to Christ. The next saint that Father Gately covers in this book is Saint Maximilian Kolbe. His life story is amazing, definitely 
read more about him when you can. Mary appeared to St. Maximilian Kolbe and offered him two crowns, one white for purity and one red for martyrdom. He accepted and became a religious brother for the white purity crown, and he was killed by the Gestapo for the red martyrdom crowd. Interestingly, he was martyred on the eve of the Feast of Mary's Assumption. I love St. Maximilian Kolbe's equation for holiness, for sainthood. His equation is basically capital W plus lowercase w equals S. Basically, if we unite God's will with our wills, we reach sanctity. And we accept Mary's guidance because she alone does God's will perfectly because Mary is completely united with God because she does not sin. Sin is what separates us from God. So since Mary was created by God without sin, she is always united with God and doing his will perfectly. And so this is the first word that Father Gately uses to sort of summarize St. Maximilian Kolbe's teaching, the first is mystery, and that mystery is Mary's immaculate conception. We know she never sinned. She never separated herself from God. She always chooses God's will and never chooses her own. So to be one with Mary is to be perfectly aligned to God's will. Another word that Father Gately uses to summarize St. Kolbe's teaching is militia. Maximilian actually means greatest and St. Maximilian Kolbe desired to give the greatest glory to God. And when we unite ourselves to the creature that glorifies God perfectly, Mary, then we give the greatest glory to God. And he taught that many people giving the greatest glory to God is better than one. So he wanted an army a militia of people giving the greatest glory to God. The third word is love. When we ask Mary to perfectly lead us to Christ and when we let ourselves experience her maternal love, we will then in turn love her more. Both St. Louis de Montfort and St. Maximilian Kolbe taught that Marian consecration is the surest, quickest way to achieve sainthood. We must speak to Mary and ask her to lead us to Christ. So I'm just covering those two saints for now. Definitely subscribe so you can watch part two. If you are Catholic, definitely get this book. It is amazing. If you are not Catholic, start with RCIA and then get this book. I know that Satan was trying to keep me from Marian consecration. I've had fatigue. I've had doubt and snow. <laughs> my shovel even broke because the ice and snow was so bad in my driveway. So I'm going to go finish shoveling my driveway now so that I can get to mass. And worst case, don't worry, I will just Uber if I can't finish my driveway. I have my consecration prayer written out for me to pray um, after communion if there's time and after mass, definitely. And I'm going to sign and date it today and re-sign and date it annually. So I'm so excited. Also, I know Heather from A Catholic Mom's Life and Lindsay from Catholic Home Life and Vivian from Vivian Aurea are all consecrating themselves to Mary today as well as two women from my local women's group. So it's so beautiful that we're all making this Marian consecration today together. Highly recommend this preparatory book for Marian consecration. I hope you're having a beautiful week and I'll see you next time for part two. Bye!